south in the Caribbean Sea, the Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on this system that will likely change your weekend plans. Good morning, Eastern North Carolina. It's Saturday, October 28th. Thanks for waking up with us on News Channel 12 Weekend Edition. I'm Maduria Chumba. Let's go straight to meteorologist Ashley Pratt in the Storm Track 12 Weather Center. She is tracking that storm system and how it's going to affect your forecast. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. And News Channel 12 will have your most accurate coverage of this storm all weekend long. Watch for updates in all of our newscasts and we'll provide fresh updates all day long today and tomorrow on WCTI 12 as well on our mobile apps and watch our meteorologists on Facebook live throughout the weekend as well. New information this morning, police arrest a second suspect in the murder of a Goldsboro man Friday. Anthony Rhodes Barnes is in the Wayne County Detention Center under no bond. His next court appearance is Monday. Authorities say Barnes is one of two intruders who attacked Robert Bayman in his Goldsboro home on October 18. Bayman later died of his injuries at Vidant Medical Center in Greenville, this according to police. Now on October 25, police arrested Kendall Price, the first suspect without incident. And you'll see a lot more of ECU police cars out looking for drunk drivers through Halloween. It's in partnership with the state's Booze It and Lose It campaign. 15 extra patrols are out on the streets all weekend. All officers will be out on patrol on Halloween night. That's about 60 officers. Booze It and Lose It campaigns are running statewide right now. And two men are under arrest in connection with the murder of a former ECU football player. Anthony Demonic Lennon was a defensive back for the Pirates between 2011 and 2015. On Wednesday, police in Raleigh arrested 25-year-old Wontavious Jackson of Kinston and Clifton Spellman III of Greenville on murder conspiracy charges. Now, police also charged 20-year-old Stephanie Owens as an accessory for giving a false alibi. Now, Lennon was shot to death behind a Bahama Breeze restaurant in Raleigh on June 23rd. Jackson and Spellman are being held in Wake County on $1 million bond each. Owen's bond is set at $500,000. And we're learning of two more arrests in a dog fighting case. Kinston police arrested Kevin Walters and Ernest Sutton Jr. in connection with a dog fighting incident this past weekend. Police are going after the rest of the people allegedly involved in the crime with Operation Bike Back. They've issued warrants for 15 more people. Uh, if you'd like to find out who those people are, head to our mobile app to learn more about the case. And one man is in custody after he allegedly assaulted a female, according to Kinston police. William Redmond III faces felony assault charges with a deadly weapon and felony attempted second degree sex offense. The incident happened on October 21st after police responded to an assault call. A woman told officers the suspect physically and sexually assaulted her. Upon further investigation, police arrested Redmond yesterday. He is currently at Lenore County Detention Center. Some good news for military veterans who need to save some cash. All veterans who file their DD-214 documents at the Register of Deeds in Craven County beginning November 8th will get an ID loaded with benefits around town. A DD-214 is a document given to all veterans when they are discharged. Area businesses are providing discounts for all vets who file theirs with the Register of Deeds. More than 50 businesses are participating in the program. The process for the filing is very simple. Just take your original DD-214 and driver's license to the Register of Deeds. The annual Walk to End Alzheimer's event in downtown New Bern is today, and we got a peek at the preparations on Friday. The event consists of a two-mile walk around downtown New Bern, all in an effort to raise money for Alzheimer's research. And dentists are volunteering their time and skills to help get to the root canal of a national problem. The Epiphany School in New Bern is hosting that free dental clinic for a second day, all courtesy of North Carolina Mission of mercy. More than 70 dentists from as far away as Hickory are donating their time and providing services like extractions, cleaning, x-rays and even customized dentures. Many patients say they've lived with pain in their mouths for months and even years simply because they couldn't afford dental care.
The 14th annual National Prescription Drug Take Back Day is ongoing. People across the country are turning in pills and other drugs today with no questions asked. Governor Roy Cooper is encouraging everyone to participate. He launched North Carolina's opioid action plan earlier this year. The focus is on reducing the oversupply of prescription opioids and the governor issued a statement, quote, the fight to end the opioid crisis affects all of us. New questions arising about the Russian probe. We take a look at why some are asking the lead investigator to step down. And coming up in your Sports Minute update, a showdown between Wes Craven and Aiden Grifton. Brian North has all the highlights from the Blitz. And if you need something to do yeah. while it's raining, here's something for your family to check out this weekend. The Craven County Fair is underway, and it's only $5 to get you through the gates. The fair continues through November 5th, so grab your rain jackets and head on over to the fair. And new suspicions are rising in the alleged Russian probe. Why some say the lead investigator should step down now. Should the FBI's lead investigator step down from the Russian probe? It's the question on many people's minds this week. And still to come this morning, Wes Craven takes on Aiden Grifton in this week's round of high school football blitz. And Brian North has all the highlights coming up. And for a look at highlights from our high school football blitz, News Channel 12's Brian North joins us now with our Sports Minute update. Need a light jacket. And the rest of the week, of course, still bright and sunny. And that's all the time we have with you this morning. Good morning, America's next. Good morning, Eastern North Carolina. It's Saturday, November 4th. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Adoria Chumba. Unseasonably warm temperatures across Eastern North Carolina for the first week of November, but a cold front could change all of that. Meteorologist Ashley Pratt is in the Storm Track 12 Weather Center with a first look at your forecast. Good morning, Ashley. More. The Down East Holiday Show continues at the Greenville Convention Center. The event raises money for the Pitt Community College Foundation. This year, there are more than 190 vendors participating. Meteorologist Donnie Cox is getting a taste of the holiday spirit at the convention center. Thanks, Donnie. And as you heard Donnie say, the event runs from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. today and continues through Sunday from noon to 5. News Channel 12's Valentina Wilson will be there Sunday afternoon. And for more information, head to our website. And we can all use an extra hour of sleep. Today is the last day to enjoy daylight saving time. Every state except Arizona and Hawaii will fall back one hour, returning to standard time. So Sunday at 2 a.m., be sure to set your clocks back one hour and prepare yourself for driving home from work in the dark and expect sunset around 5 p.m. An update on a murder case in Beaufort County. A man admits to killing his mom and burning down her home. 41-year-old Herbert Heath Jr. entered a guilty plea Friday for the 2014 incident. Authorities found 66-year-old Mildred Heath dead in her burned-out mobile home on Cherry Run Road in Washington. A judge sentenced Heath to between 29 and 37 years behind bars. An autopsy on Mildred revealed she had six broken ribs and injuries consistent with strangulation. Residents in one neighborhood wake up to find their tires slashed. We went to Glancy Street in Swansboro Friday to see the damage for ourselves. One vehicle owner says he and about 18 of his neighbors were targeted. Some of them will now need up to 10 new tires, and that could cost close to $2,000 for brand new tires. Police are still trying to find the culprit. They're asking. Changes in the town of Riverbend and more could be on the way. They're part of the building utilization strategy known as BUS. The Red Caboose Library was mo moved from a dilapidated barn to a new temporary location. A grand opening held Friday. Now, town council members are also considering remodeling the town hall along with the public works and police department buildings. Did you know there's a large stretch of undeveloped land behind the Emerald Isle Community Center? Well, we explored a 30-acre plot of land in the middle of Emerald Isle. A national group called the Conservation Fund recently bought that land, and they'll transfer ownership to the town of Emerald Isle in the spring. Originally zoned for condo and residential development, now Emerald Isle town leaders plan to turn it into a nature preserve and multi-purpose park with 20 acres remaining untouched. 
Another Kmart in our area is closing. Sears Holdings says the Kmart on Henderson Drive in Jacksonville will close in late January 2018. It's one of the 45 Kmart and 18 Sears stores in the U.S. affected by the closure. The company did not give an official closing date, but the store will stay open for the holiday shopping season. Kmart in Moorhead City was not on the list of the stores closing. More medicine will help reverse opioid overdoses in our state. Governor Cooper announced the state's purchase of 40,000 additional doses of naloxone. It's for distribution in, to emergency medical technicians, anti-addiction centers and volunteer groups. The governor also says that Medicaid no longer requires prior approval before physicians can prescribe another drug that reduces opioid cravings and thwarts abuse. The two-dose naloxone units cost $3 million. The medication is credited with saving the lives of thousands of people in North Carolina who were overdosing on heroin or other opium-based drugs. And in the day ahead, ever wanted to break a world record? Well, today could be your lucky day. Camp Albemarle is attempting to break a world record for the most people making and eating s'mores. Guinness World Record rules will be followed to make sure the event is documented properly. The current record is 453 people, and you can begin enjoying those s'mores at 3 this afternoon. The camp is asking for donations of $5 per person to cover costs and raise money for camp scholarships. If you enjoy bacon and like the taste of beer, why not combine the the two. The Newburn Bacon and Brew Festival began Friday at the Farmer's Market. You can enjoy beer and wine as well as bacon-inspired dishes while listening to live music. Tickets are available online for just $10 or $15 at the door. Proceeds benefit the United Way. Making sure your children get the education they need can start at the legislative level. A legislative breakfast gave Craven County educators a chance to express their concerns to lawmakers. News Channel 12's Aisha Bo breaks down some of the possible solutions. Also at the top of the list, legislation needed for substitutes and retirees and local control of the school calendar. Educators say all of these will provide a better learning experience for children. And coming up on News Channel 12 Weekend Edition, we get reaction to the no jail time verdict for Sergeant Bo Bergdahl. Hear what the defense plans next. And we have highlights from the high school football blitz and your sports minute update. That's coming up with News Channel 12 Brian North. It almost feels like spring. Yeah, I know. It's especially when we had 80 yesterday. We're going to mm. see that 80 again going into next week. So, I mean, if you like the warmer weather, Enjoy it while you can because right, it looks like absolutely. it's going to change a little bit. Absolutely. All right, now, talking about changing weather, mm -hmm. people in California are breathing a sigh of relief following weeks of evacuations. They're expecting the weather to help cool the flames there. The cold front slid into California last night, dumping drenching rain and heavy mountain snow to northern California and spotty rainfall to southern California. And this will continue on into Sunday. Now, the wet and wintry weather, of course, will stay through Sunday. Still to come on News Channel 12 Weekend Edition, Sergeant Bo Bergdahl narrowly escaping the lockup with a no jail time verdict. We get the reactions to the controversial verdict and hear what the defense plans next. And could you use an extra hour of sleep? Well, you'll get it this weekend. Hear what the end of daylight saving time could mean for your body clock. President Trump calls a sentence for Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl a disgrace. A military judge ruled Friday that the five years the Taliban held Bergdahl was punishment enough for abandoning his post in Afghanistan. Pro the investigation into the 2016 presidential election shifts to the Democrats, for the moment at least. Chief political correspondent Scott Thurman looks deeper into allegations that the Democratic nomination was rigged. President Trump had plenty more to say to Cheryl about terror taxes and the critical trip he's on right now to Asia. We want to remind you to tune in for Full Measure with Cheryl Atkinson this Sunday at 6.30 a.m. And still to come this morning, Brian North takes us through the highlights of the high school football blitz in your Sports Minute update. All right, and that's all the time we have with you this morning. Good morning, America is next.